let me outline um, four different possible uh, explanations one can give, and uh, and I will just uh, leave it uh, leave it to the audience to to reflect on on these uh, four possible explanations for why we've had this extraordinary uh, run of of, of uh, bubbles and busts over the last uh, number of decades. Uh, the first one, which one might describe as sort of the uh, the left wing or liberal answer, is that it has it has basically been driven by reckless lending, lack of regulation, and greed, and that uh, and that in effect. Uh, the entire boom since um, uh, the early Reagan years in 1982 was basically driven by um, by um, by this escalating leverage that, uh, in effect, was more fake than real, and uh, and that uh, it it has basically come to an end, and that uh, it worked while it did, but it was basically the fault of the uh, of the lenders and all kinds of agency problems associated with them. Um, there's a there's a second type of political answer, which is the right-wing or conservative answer, which is that it basically was the fault of the borrowers, that they were recklessly borrowing all this money. And it was, it was people who were too greedy and buying houses and going on credit, and, um, and that it was sort of the product of a narcissistic and selfish generation that uh, was, not, was short-sighted and not thinking about the future. And uh, under that sort of a narrative, you might trace things back to, say, 1968 uh, and say that was the year that everything went downhill in the U.S. and the hippies took over or something, something along those lines. Now, I, I think there's um, – it is, of course, the case that these two explanations are not inconsistent, and it is possible that uh, there were problems with both the uh, lenders and the borrowers and that in some sense uh, there was something about um, – uh, something deeper about the whole political system which uh, failed to proactively deal with these things. And uh, just uh, speaking, uh, speaking on my, in my own context, uh, you know, it was obvious that there was an insane housing bubble three years ago. And you could talk about it. You could scream about it. You could go on CNBC and tell people uh, there was a housing bubble. They should not buy houses. And it was like shouting into a hurricane. Nobody was willing to listen. And, uh, and there is something about the, um, the nature of these things that is extraordinarily uh, pro-cyclical in a bad way in terms of our political system, where when there is when there is when everything's going well, the regulations get loosened. When things are going badly, they get tightened. So that in effect, uh, the political process has had the effect not of dampening these bubbles and booms, but actually exacerbating them tremendously. And I think that is going to be one of the real serious challenges uh, uh, we face in the years ahead. In the technology context, for example, in the late 90s, uh, which, uh, uh, you know, there were obviously <coughs> tremendous abuses. We uh, dealt with the abuses with Sarbanes-Oxley, and there have been basically no more I tech IPOs or virtually no tech IPOs in, in six years. So we had, we had an excessive boom, the regulators did nothing, and then we had an excessive bust and we had an overreaction. And, uh, and again, you can blame it on special interest groups that are serving the lenders, you can blame it on, on, on um, the, the desire of the borrowers to keep the easy money going. But when basically uh, both of them end, uh, you, you have to wonder how, um, how, this, how this can better be handled. I think one of the challenges the, uh, the, that uh, is happening on a global scale is that the inability of our political system to proactively deal with these bubbles uh, is calling into question the very concept of democratic capitalism. And I think one of the, one of the uh, challenges in the next, uh, next four to five years is that a sort of a more authoritarian version of capitalism of the sort that one sees in China will uh, get a lot more appeal because uh, the argument will be that it is able to, uh, to resist the, uh, the appeal of, of, of uh, people and special interest groups uh, and sort of act on behalf of the whole society. And I think the uh, challenge for the next president is going to be to somehow um, rehabilitate uh, the good name of democratic capitalism. And uh, it, will be, it will be quite a big challenge. And I, I certainly hope that whoever becomes president uh, will succeed at that. Let me, uh, let me, however, outline a fourth uh, possible explanation for why so many of these bubbles have turned into busts. And this is probably my own, my own personal uh, hobby horse in this, which is that there's not been enough real growth in the economy, and that in some sense, uh, the reason so many of these booms didn't work was that the whole economy was not growing. And that this is not a question about finance or politics or regulation, or at least not centrally about those, but about science and technology and the rate at which science and technology are progressing. And, uh, and I think sort of one, and you know, while there's incredible hype 
surrounding tech companies and scientific innovation, uh, the reality has simply uh, not lived up to the hype for a very long time. And, uh, and the, the, you know, the anecdote I would cite is if, if we were sitting in this room in 1968 uh, and talking about what was the future of the U.S. going to look like in 40 years, uh, you know, we would have predicted vacation trips to the moon, um, uh, spaceships on Mars, um, massive increases in productivity. Zerbon Schreiber, a uh, European writer who wrote The American Challenge in 1967, uh, said that by the year 2000, the average person in the U.S. would be working seven hours a day, four days a week, and have 13 weeks a year of paid vacation time, which, uh, which was a reflection of the incredible growth in productivity that was set to take place by accelerating technology and science. And, I, and it's gone, everything's gone the other way. There's not been enough progress. And I think, uh, I think the long-term challenge that I would submit is that we somehow need to, uh, to get that restarted. And it is very, it's not easy. Um, it's, it's, it's broken down for a lot of very complicated reasons. Uh, but I think that, uh, that in some sense, um, uh, that's the kind of thing that, that needs to be very much restarted. If I had a uh, last thought on this is, if one had to look at the whole series of bubbles, the one that I think was the central one, perhaps not just in time but also in importance, was the tech uh, bubble of the late 90s. And in some sense, when that one turned out to go wrong, it meant that none of them would work. Because if there was not going to be exponential progress in technology, nothing else made sense. And you could leverage up in housing, but eventually housing prices would go down if there was no real growth in the society taking place. Um, and the same, I think, is true of, uh, of finance and uh, to a lesser extent of the, uh, the emerging market, of the emerging market story. So I think the, um, I would encourage us to very seriously rethink why there's been so little progress and how that can be accelerated. And I think this is certainly uh, one of the great things that uh, a big thing is an impetus for doing.